Okay, so I think it would be good that we'll open with some scripture before we have a discussion on Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King. That's not who we're talking about. We're talking about Martin Luther in the 1500s. So I think it would be good. So it would help us remember how a person can be saved and enter into heaven. It's very important. It says, but to him, and it's talking a person, regardless of who it is, and the sentences or the scripture before it is talking Abraham believed and his faith was considered him as righteous. So this is following that. So, but to him who does not work or doesn't do, but believes on him who justifies, justifies who? The ungodly. It's obvious here. We are sinners. When we trust in Jesus, we are justified. I'm a sinner, and I'm ungodly, but God is the one who saves me through grace and through faith in Jesus Christ. His faith is accounted for righteousness. And so when you have faith, you are given righteousness, but it comes from Jesus and what he did and his work on the cross. He is the one who obeyed all the laws for us. <coughs> so now I want to have a discussion about the Catholic's perspective and their view of justification. Justification. Do you know what the word justification means? Righteous, but explain it. Explain it a little bit more in a sentence and what it means. God looks at us when we are in Christ, and that person's in Christ. When God sees us, he declares us righteous because of Jesus. Because it's all of Jesus' work, not our works. So we... The Bible teaches, yes, that faith is sufficient, meaning that it is just right condition for justification. For justification, it requires faith. And do you know what the word sufficient means? Sufficient means it's enough. So faith is enough. And we believe now the Catholics though in their perspective is faith itself is not sufficient it is not a sufficient condition for justification but that it is a necessary condition for justification so not enough or enough. What's the difference between those two? It means nothing? What do you mean it means nothing? Okay, let me explain this. The Catholics believe that you have faith. That's good. But the person themselves must continually in works obey follow the church church's laws and what God's law says in the Bible he has to keep it he has to be able to do that in order to maintain his justification if he's unable and then falls away into sin that justification reduces and then you have to go to confession and that shows you know, it's an outside works that says I'm repent, repenting. And the priest says, I absolve you of your sins. And you get to start again. So your justification is refilled. 
You know, like seriously, maybe if you're killing somebody or rape somebody, you lose your justification. You have to go back and do confession and show that you are truly repentant, that you're sorry, and you have to go through a different <coughs> different traditions, such as like the Lord's Supper and then different things that steps that you have to do and then you earn your justification back. So the Catholic believes you have to add works. We believe that it's faith alone and that it is sufficient. The Catholics do not though. They believe that you must have works. Everybody okay with that? So now, Latin word here, and they use it because Martin Luther and many others who preached long ago used Catholic Latin, or the Catholics use Latin. And it helps us to remember what we believe. So sola, fide. So the the Catholic word, what does it mean? Trust, faith, son, sola means only. <clears throat> Same as like an airplane. A solo flight means one person who flies by themselves. You know, they train, they learn from a teacher, and now I get to do it by myself. So it's my solo flight. I mean, it's only me. So, sola means that. And faith alone. So, sola fide means faith alone. The Catholics do not believe that. We believe that. Faith minus means we take away the works equals justification. The point is, is that faith alone and that it is sufficient for our justification. It's not necessary to add to our faith for justification, but faith by itself is sufficient. So faith alone is what that means. So five. Any questions? Believe or faith alone, you have to believe in Jesus alone. No others, <clears throat> just the one. Right? You're, that's <laughs> what I was going to talk about next. So faith alone, right? You know, I want to really emphasize and really clarify to make it black and white. It is not cloudy, it is not a color of gray, it is clear, it is black and white. Grace alone. Not having to follow the law or obey the law, it is grace alone that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone in Jesus Christ. We have one more word here to go here. What is it? If the world speaks wrong, and the ways, you know, all these different things, and I go and I pray and ask for forgiveness and forgive my wrong ways, you know, I'll trust in you, and then I'm really <coughs> right? So when you trust in Jesus and your salvation, all your sins have been cast away. They've all been crucified on the cross. And the Father is going to forgive you. Yes, he's already forgiven you. So there's one more word that's going to go here. Recently you threw it out here, Demetrius. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me the answer. What was it? Trust in the Lord only, Jesus only, Christ alone. <coughs> Jesus Christ alone. So it was, must remember these three. It's very important. 
that we remember these. The Catholics, do they agree with this? No. They believe that these are not enough. They believe that you add to a faith. You must go to Catholic Church. You must go through their seven sacraments, like baptism. And then the next step, you have to go through different sacraments of penance meaning repenting of your sins, confession, prayer, you know, asking, pray to Mary, and the rosary. Yes, all these different things. <clears throat> That's worse. They believe that you have to do these sacraments. And grace, we believe that grace is enough, but the Catholics do not. It says that grace that God's grace is poured out in a person, into a person, and now that person must keep their grace. And how will they keep their grace? So you ask if you believe in salvation through grace? Yes, they'll say yes. But grace alone? Oh, no, uh-uh. They believe that it requires works that you must do. Now, grace, you know, we explain grace. I'm sorry, I think I got these a little confused. You started with grace and then you went back, so I got a little confused. Okay, grace, but you have to add merits to it. What's the difference, though? There's a slight difference between merits and works. Merits means what we do to deserve it, to keep it. You know, I work and I deserve or earn grace. So you earn grace, where is the power then? But also, if we... Grace doesn't mean that we, are, we earn it. It's given to us freely as a gift. We don't deserve or earn the gift. Your birthday... Your parents, they give you a gift, depending on whether you're a good boy or girl. No, they just give you the gift, right? Because it's your birthday. So next, it says, we believe that we trust in Jesus Christ. Christ and me. It's talking about what Christ did plus me. So now... We're going to go slowly through some verses that will help clear up that this is not what the Bible teaches. I'm using the NLT. So everybody can see that far back there? I'm going to sign it slow. I'm going to try my best in ASL. I'm not going to explain and expound on everything here. It says, obviously, the law, God's law, applies to those whom it was given. For the purpose of the law, what was it for? It was to keep people from making excuses, showing them that they were sinners indeed. Because the law shows us that we can't keep the law. <clears throat> and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. Every one of us are sinners. For no one can ever be made or successfully work to become right with God by doing what the law commands. <coughs> the law simply shows us how sinful we truly are. But, but now God has shown us a way how we can be made right with him without keeping and obeying the law as the requirements. 
it was promised in the writings, the Old Testaments of Moses and the prophets of long ago. We are made right with God. How? By faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone or anyone who believes. When you believe and have faith, it is for anyone, regardless of who it is. So, no matter who we are, Jews, Gentiles, American, African, it doesn't matter. It is for everyone. It is for all because we are all sinners. For we fall short of his measurers. We're bad off. We don't even come close to his standards. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. For he did this, how? Through Jesus Christ. And when he freed us from the penalty or punishment of sin, we have no punishment for sin, from sin, I mean, for our sins, right? So it's obvious here, clear, that faith plus works, it has nothing to do with works. It says freely. It doesn't depend on what we do. And grace, the grace only comes from God. He gives it to us. From the Greek word, it means a gift. So the lice, it says Christ. It emphasizes through Jesus Christ. He is the only one who frees us from the punishment of sin. It is not through what I do and what God has done. It is only through God and through faith in Jesus Christ. So faith alone, yes. Grace alone, yes. Christ alone, absolutely. But the Catholics do not believe that. The Catholics require added. Why? And there's some various reasons. And one reason, and we will discuss it, one reason why. I know I'm going to give you a big <laughs> word, and I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Analytical justification is a Catholic word. Synthetical justification. We believe in the Bible. I know y'all are giving me an expression about, oh my, don't worry about it. Tammy was one of them giving me this look. So Catholics are analytical and synthetical is ours. So what that means is, so I'm going to give you an example. you know, a sentence to give you an example so it help us understand it. It's easy. Sentence. A deaf person can't hear. That's what analytical statement means. It means it's just general. You know, I'm talking to explaining what analytical means versus synthetical. Deaf person, it's a fact. It's established. A deaf person cannot hear. It's proven. A deaf person, what does that mean? But what does it mean? You're deaf. You can't hear, right? Deaf means you can't hear. <laughs> So a deaf person can't hear. Well, that's obvious, right? It's right there with the word deaf. We know what that means. And sometimes we ask a person, are you deaf or are you hearing? 
I'm deaf. Oh, okay. Then you know that means that it can't hear. They're the same, right? So it's established on fact, something that's already there. Okay? Analytical is what it means. Oh, yeah, I already know that. So I talked with the license office, and I am deaf. And then that she would turn around and try to talk to me. And I'm like, do you read this? Do you understand what I've written here? And she continues to talk to me. I was like, I cannot hear. Can you write? And she keeps two, three, four times. And I started getting a little angry there. You know, she missed the point about a deaf person not being able to hear. A deaf person is obviously cannot hear. You know, so... It's sufficient analysis. Now, synthetical statement is different. Sin. Means parallel. Sync. It comes together parallel. Like competitive? No, it's not like a right race. It's not like a race car. Okay, so let's let's see this here. A deaf person wears a hearing aid. Okay? So these are not the same statements though. They're different. What's the difference? Analytical means when you look at this, a deaf patient I mean, a deaf person cannot hear. But this, synthetical, means a deaf person who can't hear, yes, but wears a hearing aid. You know, they put it together. It's something new. You can hear, right? So I'm just saying, suppose you took them a deaf person. You decide that person have a hearing aid. I don't have a hearing aid. I'm deaf. Right? Do you have a hearing aid? Alan, yes. But it says a deaf person wears a hearing aid. You know, some people who wear hearing aids can't understand the word. They use it for noise. But that, that's not the point here. It says a deaf person always has a hearing aid, pretty much. But no, we really don't know because we cannot analyze that that says a deaf person. Oh yeah, that means they have a hearing aid. Is that true? No, it's not. Some deaf people have hearing aids and some don't. Right? So, the point is synthetical is something outside of the statement. But these both go together in the statement. It's something outside that's been added to a statement. A deaf person wears a hearing aid. That's been added, but not always true. But we know that a deaf person doesn't mean that they absolutely have a hearing aid. So that's what this means by synthetical versus analytical. So like blind people can't see, we can assume and know that they can't see. But does a blind person mean that they have the walking cane all the time? No, not all of them. Is that what this means? A blind person can't see. That's an analytical statement. <clears throat> so analytical justification. <coughs> And how they look at it is, a righteous man shall live by faith. The righteous man. The person, how do they become righteous? How? 
Oh yeah, that means that they'll live by faith. <clears throat> So in the Old Testament, it teaches that those who sin, die. In Romans chapter 6, verse, I think it's Romans chapter 6, maybe chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 16, I think. It says, those who sin deserve what? Death. John chapter 3, verse... I'm sorry, Romans chapter 3, verse... 20. Romans chapter 3, verse 20, 30, chapter 3, verse 26. Wait a minute. No, it's not. Wait a minute. I'm wrong. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. <laughs> it says, A righteous man shall live, means that they do it themselves. Like the same, like the deaf person who can't hear, right? The righteous man himself. Now remember the scripture. Where is this verse? But the righteous man shall live by faith. Righteous Martin Luther struggled with the meaning of this. How does the person themselves be righteous? Who is righteous? Not me. Martin Luther said it was not me. He said, I'm not righteous, but righteous man? Who out of there? What is this verse talking about? So they looked at this word righteous. Meaning itself. Martin Luther <coughs> couldn't understand this. The righteous man. So if you're talking about Martin Luther, if you took out righteous and put Jesus, it's, but the scripture is talking about any person. So now... You know, the same verse that we used here, we're using here, righteous man. Martin Luther struggled with trying to explain that, knowing that we were all sinners. How can a man be righteous? So Martin Luther struggled with how do we make ourselves righteous? Remember in the verse I just signed? The law simply shows us how sinful we are. So then who is righteous? I can't find one. Jesus was the only one. So that's the reason why Martin Luther struggled with that scripture. But now God has shown us a way that we can become right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. So we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Yet God in his grace freely to make us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ. We all understand, right? It's faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone. So it's clear in this scripture verse, but what's wrong with the Catholics? Why don't they catch this? They're looking at the analytical justification they're looking at this word righteous Martin Luther was under the teaching or the doctrine of the Catholics for a long time about what they must do they must do this they must add this 
you know, sense. And so, a limp Catholic or ours, they had to continue to work to eliminate to be careful, you know, reading what it says, and it's the opposite, you know, and then I don't agree with you. But some people who are under Catholicism for such a long time, in their mind, it is so embedded in them that they have to add to it. It is rooted in their teaching, in the Catholic teaching, that they must do, must do, must do. In some other churches, some Baptist churches, says you must do these things too. There are different churches that believe that you have to add to it. But that's not true. So the point is, why do the Catholics not grasp this verse? How does one make himself righteous? Through works. They emphasize that. Righteous, how? How does a person become righteous? They, it comes from God, not from what's inside. So the Catholics have another word. Martin Luther used these, and the Catholics used these. There are two English words from Canada, alien, like the person from Canada is an alien, right? Right? Justification means righteous. And so the word means alien. What is alien? It doesn't mean a Martian or somebody from outside of outer space. That's not what we're talking about, an alien. You know, the one that's all green. Alien means outside and it doesn't belong here. So it's talking about Robert himself is an alien because he's from Canada. He's not been, he wasn't born here. He's from outside of the United States. So he is considered an alien. Don't worry, he has a green card, so don't worry about that. He's righteous, but righteousness comes from the outside. It has been given to us. Righteousness does not come from within ourselves and what we do. It comes from the outside. <laughs> so the Catholics say, what about faith, but you have to have works, doings. You must. And they use this verse here. You see, faith by itself isn't enough. It says it's not enough unless it produces good deeds or good works. You must have works. So if faith itself is dead and useless if you don't. So this is where the Catholics use this scripture verse. You know, when we maybe the Catholics are right. Is that what we think? No, what does this scripture verse mean? Remember Paul, he explained and emphasized justification by faith only. James wrote justification by faith and works, both. Did Paul, was he wrong or was James wrong? Which one was right? They were both right. So what does this mean here? That this scripture here is for people to see our good works not for God to see us it's before others so faith shows that we have fruits and then they see life being changed and your love for brothers and sisters are not like it was before it you know, before it was nothing now I'm saved love my brothers, love the Lord, you know, I'm not just sitting around waiting and waiting, no. 
my heart has been changed. I become motivated to show it outwardly. And that's what this means. It doesn't mean that I must do these works and that I add that to my faith. No. Doing works is a result from our faith in Jesus Christ. So Martin Luther heard the Catholic talking about the scripture verse found in James that you must do. So Martin Luther's explanation to them was, we are justified by faith alone. But faith itself is not alone. You know, you have to have faith with evidence and proof. And your works is a proof that your faith is true and not Faith. faith alone makes us justified or gives us justification plus it makes us want to work because we're changed he has declared us righteous we are in Christ the Holy Spirit is in us and now I am motivated to show the love so the works is not what saves us. Having to obey the law is not what saves us. This becomes a result of our faith. Faith is by itself. Faith alone. But then faith gives us justification, which then motivates us for our works. Faith plus works doesn't give us justification. If we put it to the other side, no, that is not true. Only faith alone gives us justification. So it says faith alone. It's talking about faith. It's the only one on this side of the equation and not a faith that is alone because works are there because of our justification. Faith? Yes. I am justified through faith. I'm a Christian. But if I have no works, I have no motivation, nothing to come to church, and I stay in my same life as I was before I was saved and continue to sin, you see no fruits. That's what this works means means that his faith is dead. And that's what James says. You will see and know that they are saved and justified. God knows because he sees the heart. We do not. Unless old people who are not able to be involved, of course, of course. But they can pray. You know, they, people who are stuck in a wheelchair, people, you know, they can do different things. So faith, justification, and works means righteousness and works. When I read, I become motivated. I want to go to church. I want to listen. And I grow and I mature. That's what we're talking about. Right? Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. So faith. Faith helps produce our good works. Okay, so next week, October the 31st, 1517, The what? The what? The 31st. The what? 31st. Right. Perfect. Next Wednesday is the 31st. 